Now, before we jump in, we're just going to cover some recent questions and conversations that came in via email today prior to the webinar. Didn't do sort of a full mock-up as we sometimes do, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Well, you'll see why in just a moment. But let's walk through some of the pre-webinar email questions. First one came in from Anthony, and Anthony wanted to know what risk benefits are there if you do a poor man's covered call strategy on SPY with zero DTE. What is this referring to? Well, now that we have essentially daily options on SPX and SPY, We've been getting the questions, some from Anthony, some from other users as well. What should I look for if I want to do a zero day to expiration? Meaning, coming up on Monday, selling a cash secured put on SPX or SPY Monday morning at some point, maybe after 10 o'clock when the market settles down and looking to close it before 4 p.m. We took some questions about iron condors before, but this one, of course, is related to the poor man's covered call. A calendar spread where I'm going to buy an in the money call, maybe two weeks out in time, maybe a month out in time, maybe three months out in time, and try to sell zero day to expiration options against that long call continuously. We're going to look a little bit more at this structure I created in just a moment after we review. My initial response via email to Anthony was well, the same risks and benefits that you'd have with. Any poor man's covered call is really what it comes down to. Having a shorter term expiration doesn't really change the risk and benefits of the strategy itself. However, it may compound some of the benefits and may compound some of the risks also. The benefits in theory. Well, when you're looking at a poor man's covered call, buying a call far out in time and selling against it. Whether I'm buying six months out in time, whether I'm buying eight months out in time, whether I'm buying one month out in time and selling weekly against it. We had a lot of these conversations on poor man's covered call when the weeklies initially came out and started to get more ground. In other words, instead of doing a poor man's covered call by buying a leap 12 months out in time and selling month by month against it, what if I bought something shorter and sold week by week against it? Well, naturally, in theory, you're going to see a better annualized return selling day by day than you would week by week, just like you should, in theory, see a better annualized return in premium generation selling week by week over selling month by month. Less volatility is expected due to the shorter time frame of the sold call. We only have a few hours. We know the market fluctuates intraday, especially if some news comes out, but rather than having sold a call as in a covered call or maybe even out of the money cash secured put, we had a question come in on that we'll get to in a moment. And uh, or the calendar spread here, poor man's covered call, we only have a few hours of volatility to worry about, not seven days, not five days, not 14 days of ups and downs in the market. And let's be honest, the last two weeks or two years, excuse me, we see some frequent volatility intraday and intraweek. This should mitigate some of that. Because we're selling every day, we should see less time decay. That, of course, depends on the time frame you select for the long call that you're buying further out in time. Assuming that everything stays relatively the same during the day, plus or minus 0.2 or 0.3% on the underlying security, we're going to see less time decay than if we sold a four day out or five day out option and at the end of four or five days. The risks, again, in theory, but also again, related to the same things we'd see with. Any poor man's covered call. The shorter time frame you go, the smaller premium you get, which means you're getting less against the long option. You're getting less protection against the long call you bought further out in time because it's such a small premium. You also initially would see a lower maximum return, the peak of the profit and loss chart, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Just with any poor man's covered call, the improper structure could cause you to lose in both directions. We have a filter and power options. If you've followed some of the calendar spread, poor man's covered call discussions, this particular filter I had added in there is the uh, strike difference divided by the net debit or net debit divided by the strike difference. Sorry. And what that means is that I always want the net debit to be less than the difference in the strike prices. So if the underlying suddenly moves up and with SPY, not SPX, but with SPY, this could be a situation. If I get assigned on that short call, 
and my broker exercises the long call to deliver the short. If my net debit was higher than the difference in strike prices, even though the stock moved up as I wanted, I could be locked into a loss because I'm not getting the time value out of the long call. It's just the intrinsic. That would give you two ways to lose an upper and lower break even. Percentage wise now, think about doing a shorter term. I'm buying a two week out long call and I wait till 10 o'clock in the morning. And I sell a short call against it after some of that market volatility from 9.30 to 10 a.m. or 10.15 a.m. Eastern time. And I think everything is okay, but 12 noon, some news comes out about the debt ceiling, uh, about the war in Ukraine, uh, anything of that nature, and the market plummets. You could quickly see 60, 70, or 80% loss on that two week out long option that you bought trying to play shorter term against it. Okay, so based on the lie of leverage, you could see significant percentage losses. On the other side of that, we're going to be collecting smaller premium for a zero data expiration option. So if SPY suddenly shot up after 10 o'clock, good news comes out at 12 noon, related to the debt ceiling, related to no more interest rate hikes, related to inflation, related to the war in Ukraine, and the market suddenly spikes, your buyback cost to try to roll, to not be assigned on the first, second, or third cycle of that trade to continue to collect more premium is going to be much more significant than the initial premium you collected that was so small. Same things that happen with any poor man's covered call. You have a sudden run up in the stock, you're going to pay a lot of money to buy back that premium. You have a sudden drop in the stock unexpectedly, you're going to be looking at double digit losses on that long option, even if it's three, four, five, six months out in time. Now, the difficulties with establishing structure on this, and this is something that needs an in depth look at. I mean, what is the best long option time frame? Is it two weeks out in time for zero Ds to expiration, continual selling? Is it three weeks out of time, one month, or is it two months? Now, in general, when I do a diagonal spread, a poor man's covered call, I look for a structure where I have at least eight to 10 right cycles, meaning if I'm selling two week out options, I'm looking at something maybe, you know, 14 days out of time, I should say two weeks out, 14 or 11 days out in time to start with. I'm looking for some call option that's at least 110 to 140 days out of time. So I have a minimum of that eight to 10 write cycles where I could continue to write every two weeks against the position. A popular filter that we use, the delta ratio, the delta of the long divided by the delta of the short. Would the delta ratio have to be changed or adjusted compared to a standard longer term poor man's covered call? In general, I'm going to look for a delta ratio of at least 1.8, meaning that the delta of my long is, you know, almost two times that of the delta of my short. So when the stock starts to move up, I'm gaining naturally more on my long call than I'm losing on the short option. Another popular criteria that we like to use for this structure is the implied volatility ratio. Think about it in time. I'm selling short and I'm buying, I'm selling shorter term and I'm buying something farther term. What do I want to happen with a shorter term option? I want that time decay to work quickly in my favor while the longer term option is showing less time decay because that's what I'm invested in. So I'd want an IV ratio, the implied volatility of our sold option to be higher than the implied volatility of our long option. With this zero days to expiration structure, is that often reversed? due to the daily shifts in implied volatility where that longer term option still lags, even if it's two weeks out in time, it's going to lag the daily intraday fluctuations. All right. As I mentioned, let's break down the position I showed in that first slide for this discussion. We're looking at an example. I had to use Monday, 22nd of May, because the premiums today are all dried up. It's a poor example. We can't really do a graph on the historical services. So we're just looking at this as an example. Let's say Monday morning, SPY stays around 418.59, 418.99, maybe goes to 419. I gotta sell pretty close to at the money in this structure for a good premium. Near the close of the day, we could have sold the 22nd of May 420 call for about 75 cents. That price might be down as low as 45 or 35 cents come Monday morning. 9.45, 10 a.m., 10.15 Eastern time, because two days of time value were sucked out of it from what we're seeing today. So expect that to be much, much less. But in any case, what do I want? 
I want at least four, you know, eight or nine right cycles. Now we're assuming this is one day out and we're going to buy the two week out. Second of June, 409 call, slightly in the money for 1225. Now this is going to give me a net debit of 1150 with these prices. And right away, what that means is that my net debit is not, I'm sorry, my net debit is greater than the difference in strike prices. My net debit is not less than the difference in strike prices. That's why we have two break evens. If the stock moves up in price, let's say to 428 suddenly or during that day, and I get assigned early on my 420 call, I get exercised or signed early because SPY jumped and people are selling out those calls. The market maker has to make up the balance. And my broker decides to exercise my 409 call to deliver my obligation at 420. I only get $11 back. That would actually be a loss in the case of early assignment. But also if it runs up to 430, yeah, we should be so lucky for those of us that are bulls, of course. But if it goes above 430, you're seeing an upper loss. And that's because the net debit is less than the difference in strike prices. It's a good return for zero days, assuming this was Monday morning, which it wouldn't be. That premium, again, is going to be much, much lower. But what would we have in this case if this was actually the one day out, zero days to expiration? We have to call it one. And we're 14 days out. We definitely have those right cycles, but this would be 11 days out now for the 2nd of June come Monday, May 22nd. So really, we're still going to have about those at least seven to eight, probably 10 right cycles on the position. In this case, the delta ratio did satisfy our needs or would satisfy our needs. The delta of the long divided by the delta of the short, it was 0.813 for the long and a delta of 0.411 for the short. We've got a delta ratio of 1.98. I usually like to be above 1.8 or closer to two. This satisfies that. Now the IV ratio, the IV of the short option divided by the IV of the long option is 0.5. This is the reverse of what I want. The delta of the short is 0.0. I'm sorry, the implied volatility, my apologies, is 0.08 or what you might call 8%. And the delta of the long is 0.16 or 16%. I want the reverse. I want an implied volatility of the sell over the buy of greater than one. And I don't have that here. This means that potentially, even though I'm deep in the money, 1225 with a stock at uh, 418, there's about $3 of time value there. I'm probably going to see more time value decay per day potentially on this option on my long than I'm going to get in the premium decay of the short. So those are things to consider and why this is a difficult question to answer. But let's take a look at that another way. Am I dodging Anthony's question totally? Not exactly. So we've done some discussions on these zero days to expiration positions before. I know you can't click these links. Maybe you can jot them down later on the replay, which will be available uh, you know, around 7.30 tonight, full video for Power Option subscribers. It'll be on YouTube tomorrow uh, around 1 p.m. Eastern time. But we had a discussion about a year ago on setting up a zero days to expiration spread. Of course, let me be honest and very upfront, you can use Power Options to search in all 23 strategies for anything for zero days to expiration. Cash secured, naked puts, covered calls. Well, of course, only a few series have these zero day to expiration ones. But even if you just wanted to open a trade on Friday for zero days to expirations, you could do that with covered calls, naked puts, credit spreads, iron condors, and much more. Speaking of which, Anthony asked a question several months ago about zero days to expiration iron condors. and he asked it live during the webinar and I didn't address it. And the reason why is because we walked through just like I showed what I could do with forward looking prices as an analysis, or I could use the historical tools to create a zero day to expiration iron condor screen on SPY, SPX, or even regular stocks or indexes on Friday expiration. But the problem is the historical tools are based on the numbers from the previous close. Kind of just like the example I showed, we don't know what Monday's 420 SPY premium is going to be for that day's expiration until the market opens. What's the at the money or slightly out of the money call premium gonna be? We won't know until Monday. So it's not an accurate depiction 
to be honest, use the historical tools for this structure. Any tests to evaluate the proper structure, potential return, guidelines for management have to be done during the market day. Using the historical tools is not an accurate test to give you any good idea of what could happen with these zero days to expiration series because it has to be watched during the day. Alerts have to be set so you can set the management and more. And this is something I had said I'd have to look at during the week or over several weeks to sort of analyze that. Now, that might you might say I'm dodging the question, but in all fairness, Anthony asked me this question. Uh, I think at about two o'clock Eastern time, three o'clock Eastern time. Oh, it was before three o'clock. I'm sorry, it's one thirty or two o'clock Eastern time. So, it wasn't enough time to even try to set up really a historical filter to run these tests and to start evaluating that. I don't know if I'm going to necessarily do that, but that's why it seems like I'm not going in depth with this answer because it has to be done manually to give you proper insight that we always try to give you, proper ideas on structure, proper ideas on management and the gotchas that you might come up with, the back testing doesn't support that because it's only end of day data. It has to be done as a paper trade. And as you can imagine, even with zero days to expiration, you want a good sample size. And that might be three to four weeks of playing with numbers, playing with screens, evaluating returns. And well, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of heavy lifting there to do manually, I understand. All right, let's move on now. Um, this one's going to be real quick, and then we'll get to the few, the several live questions that have come in. But Shashir also asked this afternoon, he says, I've been wondering on the merits of naked put or cash secured puts versus deep in the money covered calls. Perhaps you could cover this. We have a variety of different webinars where we've covered this. The parity trade concept of an out of the money cash secured put versus a deep in the money covered call, looking at the same expiration. For example, SPY, we just saw is trading around 419, 418.50, somewhere in that range. If I open an out of the money cash secured put for a weekly option next week, I'd be opening the May 26, all right, let's just say 410 put. And I might collect about, uh, let's just say 35 cents in premium. Not a lot, but it's shorter time. It's probably more than that. Let's call it 70. Okay. So, you know, going to the 410 strike, about 10 points out of the money. Not a deep amount out of the money, but it's a weekly, and we get 70 cents for it. You'd have the same risk profile, profit and loss chart, a parity trade. If you bought SPY at 419, 418.50 right now, and sold the in the money 410 call, let's say I bought it at 419, I sold the 410 call, and I might have a premium of $10.70, $10.72. Well, $10 of that is intrinsic value. I have the same exact 70, 71, or 72 cents of time value that I'm getting with the out of the money put. They'll have essentially the same break even, essentially the same maximum monetary profit, percentage yield versus percent return if assigned, and the same probability of earning the max return. They're parity trades. But what I sent to Shashir was, hey, there's a video here, the, one of the recent ones we did that I really liked. We started with stops on the covered calls, what we might use as triggers to close, roll, or adjust a covered call position. And then the second part of that was comparing parity trades, in the money covered call or out the money naked put. You can just do the search on our YouTube channel for stops on covered calls. This would be the first one that would come up. The parity discussion starts at 17 to about 29 minutes, so it's just about 12 minutes long on that discussion. And I told Jashir, take a look at this if you have the time before the video presentation, and if you have any questions just after that 12-minute presentation of something you want to get more clear, bring them to me today. So we'll see if Jashir comes up and gives us any questions today related to this particular topic.